Over now to new controversy along the border. We're hearing that detention centers in the south are beginning to release migrants due to overcrowding at facilities. Now, this is happening as President Trump still scrambling to find ways to pay for his proposed border wall. Eleanor, immigration chair of the National Bar Association, is joining me now uh, for more on this. Uh, so, Alan, we, we know now that um, between the scramble to, to fund the border wall, uh, there's new reports that CBP, uh, their facilities are, are overcrowded. It's full. They are, are releasing people due to a lack of space specifically. Um, there's, there's clearly no way to fund the administration's policies fully right now, right? It, that's what it seems like. So what's going to happen to these people? Where are they going from here? So the concept is really that it's not really a crisis at all. It's never been one. And so the American, Associ the American Lawyers of the Immigration Association, which I'm the vice president, also said that this is just a crisis of mismanagement, right, the way we handle people before. So in between Trump and during Obama, these people were being released to their families already in these same sort of numbers of 100 at a time in different That's locations. That's what the president calls catch and release. Yeah, catch and release, exactly. So, but the inconsistency here is that you have a president and administration that's saying all these people are criminals. They're dangerous. It's a national security. The assumption. The assumption. Well, actually the claim, right, which is right. why he said it's a national emergency, saying that we have to sort of detain all these people. I mean, he was in the Supreme Court just last week fighting for the right to detain people indefinitely and won right. in a 5-4 decision. And now he's saying we're going to release these people into these communities, which actually should have been the policy anyway, because these people are applying for asylum and they could be released to their families while the cases are being processed because it's cheaper than filling up these private prisons, which is the real problem. Now, uh, let's take a listen to DHS Secretary Nielsen. Uh, she was here at the Hill earlier this month. She's sparring with Democrats about conditions at some of these facilities. We'll talk about it on the other side. Just yes or no, are we still putting children in cages? Uh, to my knowledge, CBP never purposely put a child in a cage if they uh, mean uh, a cage uh, like uh, this. Purposely or whatever, uh, are we putting children in cages as of today? Children are processed at the border facility stations that you've been at. Some of the And I've areas... seen the cages. I just want you to admit that the cages exist. All right, Alan, you, you heard her there. She was kind of fumbling around. Yes. Uh, are, are many Americans, including Secretary Nielsen, are they in denial about what's happening? I don't think they're in denial. I think she's very clearly aware. It's just sort of the, the painting of it, the picture. She realizes that there were cages. She could have just said that there were cases to represent some Thompson and moved on to the next issue, saying, this is the condition that we're dealing with. We need to find a better way, but right now this is what we're doing. What she did instead was said, oh, the pictures that you saw were from the Obama administration, which is problematic because everything about the Trump administration says the Obama administration is bad, but they're consistently comparing themselves to the Obama administration, which is problematic. So, yes, there is a management situation at the border. And part of the issue is now we're saying, no, we're not going to let them come to the country. We're going to keep them in Mexico so they can process abroad for a very long period of time. Also, we're not clear on the numbers, right? There's an assumption in the news that there were 400 people that showed up one day. And in another article, you'll hear that there were 70,000 people that right. showed up. Which is the real number? Right. right. Which are the people who've been waiting there and which are the people who have actually arrived there? And if you knew this crisis were coming, why didn't you sort of change your management procedure? Because you're saying now it wasn't single men, it's women and children. Right. And, and we're seeing images of, of both, uh, depending on what channel you're tuning into. Exactly. Right. Um, but but we have also seen video of, of the big groups, large groups, and, and it, it is a mixed group. Um, but given the recent large groups or, or as they're being called caravans coming to the border, isn't that, on the other side of this, Alan, isn't that proof of President Trump's argument for the need of a border wall? No, because if they were processing people appropriately at the border, then you wouldn't have these long backlogs abroad, right? And you wouldn't have the long backlogs that you have in the immigration courts today, where you have 800,000 cases waiting to be processed, because he's consistently slowing down the system, claiming that they're doing security, when in fact what they're doing is just hindering everything. They're only processing 30-something people a day at the border. If they were processing more people, oh, there wouldn't be this large caravan that they're sort of saying that's waiting abroad. It's all about how many people you're allowing to come to the port every day. So would you say if more funding was, was given for more judges, more uh, lawyers, more, you know, to get the process moving, right. we wouldn't see these large groups? I'm saying, well, first, we need to have sort of a foreign policy with regards to the countries that these individuals are fleeing from, right, and controlling our part of adding to the situation yeah. that's there. That's number one. And then number two, sort of addressing the problem here in a humane fashion by appropriately staffing the courts. Right now, the courts are working on a quota system where they have to see so many cases a day. That is not how due process works in this country at all. It needs to be an ample sort of system so these people can have their cases heard and then processed appropriately. But in any, in any case, people consistently think 200 people, 400 people, that's a lot of people. For the United States, 
States as a country, that's really not a lot of people. We have more people who are overstaying than people who are showing up at our port of entries. All right. So we, in the you, southern border. You've painted out the, the step by step there. So hopefully they're paying attention. Absolutely. Alan Orr, thank you so much for your expertise in this area. Thank you for having me. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one of a kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.